Welcome back, everyone. We were talking about weapons against uh, Satan. And we looked at the topic of the Spirit of God as a weapon before we closed the last session. There are some questions here in the chat. I'll start with that, and then we will continue. So Sister Gertrude says, um, many churches do not explain about this. Oh, Sister, Sister Gertrude, you mean about the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Or uh, what exactly don't the churches no. do? Uh, this thing, the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. The baptism, yeah. The, I mean, when you're born again, you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, right? But the uh, churches don't uh, have uh, the teaching, sound teaching on the power of the Holy Spirit, you know? Huh. Like, uh, yeah, so many people are still uh, lacking uh, in the gifts of the spirits, the huh. church congregation. That's what I mean, sister. Okay, okay. Sure. So what she's saying is um, the knowledge that when we are born again, we receive the, uh, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us and then the requirement to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. These teachings are not spoken of in a lot of places maybe. And uh, that's uh, Sister Gertrude's concern. L Lucy says how we have confirmation of the Holy Spirit is upon us. Okay. So, sister, the baptism in the Holy Spirit on the first day that it happened, right, in, uh, in the upper room, when people were filled with, the filled with the Spirit, what was the result? What exactly was going on? How did it manifest? Yeah, they spoke in tongues. Now, if we read the book of Acts, even other places, like Acts chapter 8, uh, Philip goes, he does ministry. But after people are saved, they call Peter and John to come so that more, more teachings can be brought and the church can be established stronger way. Then Peter and John come, they pray for baptism in the Holy Spirit. Then how does that manifest? People start speaking in tongues. Right? So similarly, you see other instances in the Bible in the book of Acts where whenever people were prayed for baptism in the Holy Spirit, the common manifestation was tongues. So today, that's what we also believe. Like if we say that the Holy Spirit has come upon or the anointing of the Spirit or baptism in the Holy Spirit has happened, what is the evidence? That's what Sister is asking. What is the confirmation? The person would be able to speak in tongues. Is that okay, Sister Lucy? Yes, sister. Yes, sister. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any any other any other any other things more than speaking of in tongues? Where we manifest God, it's through manifestation of God itself. Yeah, so that's the manifestation of the uh, baptism in the spirit, sister. Yeah. It also okay. says in some parts that they were they were speaking in tongues. And then they were praising God. That's also there. But we would take tongues as the common common thing that happens. OK, great. Uh, moving on to Shani. Some churches don't believe the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There are churches that don't believe in speaking in tongues. Yeah, that's true. That, that also happens. We've seen that around us. Uh, but one good way is to always go back to the word. Because the word has, you know, a very clear teaching about the Holy Spirit and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. All right, let's now quickly come to the last weapon against Satan. This is praises. Okay, praises. So... Uh, you have probably done this in your praise and worship class, but we will look at it another time. We'll have to read two passages. One is Psalm 8 and verse 3. How about the online students read both of these? 
So one of you, could you please uh, read Psalm 8 and verse 3? And uh, the other person can read Psalm 149, verses 5 to 9. Psalm, verse, Psalm 8, 8, verse 3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. Was it audible, sister? <coughs> Sister, you're on mute, sister. Yeah. Uh, no, Sister Lucy, I was saying it's verse 2. Uh, my apologies. 3 is printed in the notes. So I, okay. I just went ahead and said that. However, please read Psalm 8 and verse 2. Okay, okay sister. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So notice it says, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. So how does God silence the enemy and the avenger? When? Out of the mouth. Of It says babes and nursing infants, but out of the mouth of even the believer, when praises come to God, what can God do? He can silence the enemy. Okay, so that is the power of our praise. We've all learned about uh, King Jehoshaphat, right? And that battle, when they were praising God, um, there was a victory. It's in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, where we read about the victory of uh, Jehoshaphat and his people. The way they went into battle, it's very unusual. So instead of going in with weapons to attack, like physical weapons, they went with praises to the name of our God. And that itself defeated the enemy. And that's the same thing that we are trying to understand today that for me to be an overcomer in my life I need to have praises for the Lord in my mouth so the believer who has praises is a victorious believer because our praises what do we see here through the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained you have received strength and this is the way that God silences the enemy so my praises will silence the enemy. God will defeat the enemy through my praises. So we are talking about weapons, right? We said, okay, if Satan comes against you, try all this. You, we have everything in the bag. So we have the word, we have the armor, we have, uh, you know, the we have faith as a shield. We have the name of Jesus. We have the blood of Jesus. We have the power of the spirit. But at some times... God may say, use praise. Now, which weapon God wants us to use at a given time, we don't know. Because God, we, we say out of the box. God always thinks out of the box. We can't have a formula that, okay, every time you have to do this, every time you have to do that. No. When we are walking with the Lord, we have to be sensitive to Him. At some time, God may say, I just want you to take this weapon. So I remember, uh, maybe this happened last year or the year before, I'm not very sure. But it was like, uh, I had come for a Bible college class only, I think so. And I had to make one decision about, you know, something, something ministry related, whether we're going to make this decision or that decision. And I was very anxious about it because it was difficult for me to choose and decide. So... Uh, once the classes and all were over, I went back and I, I, was, I had a little bit of time before I can make the decision. And I just asked God, like, God, I don't know what to do. I've prayed enough. I've prayed in tongues. I've done everything. 
I'm still very tensed. What what decision should I make? You know, at that time, I felt you just sing. I felt like that, and it was strange. Like, what is this God? I'm asking you which decision, and your what is coming in my spirit is you just sing. So I sat. Uh, and I just sang a couple of lines of of some song, and uh, I felt the peace of God once I sang, and I just went ahead. But the long story short is, uh, I had the peace to make a decision, and it went well, and the matter was resolved. Okay, but the way God wanted me to operate at that time is so different from the usual way that He does. Instead of saying, "Okay, pray in the name of Jesus" or command. Command it like this, like that. The thought that came to me is just sing, right? Then I realized, hey, God uses the praise as a weapon. Maybe in this situation, that's what I need. I need to praise the Lord, and when I praise the Lord, my enemy will be defeated. So it sounds a little crazy, also, that in your battle, what you found singing. Okay, so the enemy might laugh at us and say, "What is this? You should be a warrior. You should fight." But here you are sitting and singing or speaking praises. But that's what the scripture says: when we praise God, God will defeat the enemy. Okay, so it's very powerful, very very powerful. Simple things. We are in a tough situation. Instead of grumbling, instead of saying, oh, "Why did this happen? What?" We say so many things, right? Just take a deep breath. Say, "Okay, God, I know I'm in this situation, but I praise you. I praise your name. I know you will make a way for me." As simple as that. Two lines. You're praising God, thanking God. It's like the Red Sea will part, because God can do wonders when we praise His name, even in a difficult situation. So that is the power of praise that we must learn. Uh, Psalm one forty nine verses five to nine. Uh, can someone please read it? Online batch. Yes, sister. Can I read? Yes, yes, sister Gatron. Please. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. The bind to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with uh, fetters of iron to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Wow! So it sounds like war language, isn't it? Vengeance, execute judgment, bind. But how is all this going to happen? Just you know, uh, track back a little bit. It says, "Let the saints be joyful." Uh, with the praises, the high praises of God on their lips. Okay, so God is saying <coughs> that He can actually defeat the enemy when the believer is praising Him. And many of us may have heard that uh, that song, right? The story of that song, "I Raise a Hallelujah." That it was written at a time when um, a child was very ill, critically ill, and they. Wanted to pray for that child to recover, and when they were praying for the child, the person who wrote the song, he got the sense that the way you have to battle for the child's life is you have to sing, you have to praise me, and so to praise God, he wrote it. I raise a hallelujah. He wrote that song as a battle cry for that child that was critical, uh, and you know, uh, it's like God intervened in that situation. So. Even for us, uh, in in certain situations, maybe it's a very difficult situation. Just raise a hallelujah, praise to the Lord, because through that, what did we see? Vengeance. God will bind the enemy. God will, uh, you know, execute judgment on the enemy. So much will happen when we just take our position and praise the Lord. When you don't know what to do, just praise the Lord. Okay, praise the Lord, and uh, it's so very. Powerful. So that is also a weapon against the enemy. So, any any thoughts, comments, maybe experiences about praising the Lord and that being our weapon? Before I move on to the next section,
Hey, wow. So God is really training us on uh, how we can be victorious, isn't it? So use the weapons. All these weapons are there. We can use it against the enemy. But imagine, as believers, if we live a defeated life uh, and we keep saying, oh, enemy is doing this, enemy is doing that, Satan is doing this, Satan is doing that. What about all the weapons? What about the authority that God has given us? So be a victorious believer. Ask God, use the weapons against Satan. So one uh, child, I remember, uh, this was long ago, when the kid was asked, why do you want to go to children's church? And uh, they said, oh, they teach us how to fight the devil. Uh, so think about it. Even a little kid understands that I can have a victorious life when I learn the word of God. So that was the answer of that child. I'm going to children's church because they're teaching me how to fight the devil. So we as adults, as believers, there is so much that God has given us. We can fight the devil. Be victorious. Don't always come under the pressure of the devil and say, oh, Satan is doing this in my life, doing that in my life. No, we can rise above it. God has given us an entire, uh, you know, sort of set of weapons and he's also authorized us with his authority. All right, great. So let's move on. We'll go to the next section here. We'll see how much we can cover. Uh, yes, yes, Shani. What verse was that where you gave the example when they were um, singing um, praises and the enemies were defeated? What 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 verse was that? Yeah, it's uh, Second Chronicles chapter mm -hmm. twenty. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay, so now we will go to the practical ways in which we can exercise our authority and we are slowly moving towards discussing a lot more about deliverance okay deliverance from demonic powers so how exactly to exercise the authority so some terminology that we will look at today yeah chapter 11 Different ways in which we exercise our spiritual authority over demonic powers. So let's consider all these ways. And as we consider these ways, there will be some terms that we will explain, which can be used later on when we talk about deliverance you know, and demons. So one way is defensive, to protect ourselves. So uh, that we've all also discussed in the overcomer's lifestyle. That when we live in a certain way, there is protection already on us. So that is one way that we can uh, escape the attacks of the devil. Second is offensive, where we attack the devil. Okay, so that's another way to protect ourselves. We can also protect ourselves uh, through prayer and intercession. Okay, we can protect ourselves through declarations and decrees. We can protect ourselves through righteous actions. Uh, we can also walk in the power of agreement in prayer. We can have angelic assistance and uh, we can operate through authority gateways. So I'll explain all of these one by one. Let's begin firstly by understanding how to defend ourselves in the first place. So any country, uh, if, you, if you look at any nation at the borders, any smart country will already have, you know, either uh, a physical boundary or they will have soldiers or they'll have, you know, high security surveillance. Lots is going on because without that, we know the other enemies can just come in. So in the same way, when it comes to us as believers, every day, what we are, or in this course, what we have learned in every session is, there is an enemy. He's active. He's waiting to attack. So when we know this reality and we don't have a protection, that would be very foolish, isn't it? So we've got to have a protection. 
So how do we have a protection in our everyday life, in our uh, everyday walk? Do you recall in Overcomer's lifestyle, we said Adam and Eve, they did not have any weapons. God didn't tell them, blood of Jesus, name of Jesus, nothing. But they were still protected in the garden because of intimate relationship with God, because of you know uh, submission to God, obedience to God, a responsibility. God gave them a responsibility and they were functioning in that responsibility. That was their protection. So apart from that, there are a few more things for us to keep in mind. Now, if we follow all these things, there will be like an automatic uh, fence around us and it will protect us from the enemy, a hedge of protection. So the scriptures talk about a protective protective covering. How does this covering come? In the life of Job. Okay. Job chapter 1 verse 10. Does anyone want to read it? Job 1 verse 10. Job chapter was sorry. Job chapter one verse ten. Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hand, and his possession has have increased in the land. Hmm. So we recognize that Job had a hedge of protection around him. Through the words of Satan, we can understand that. Because Satan is saying, God, you only have put a fence around him. How did that fence come about? How did Job get that fence? So when we look at the life of Job, we see that he was a man of devotion. He made sacrifices. He worshipped God. He uh, you know, prayed. So he had a lifestyle of worship. So when we have a lifestyle of worship, you know, we have prayer, we have, uh, we are living for God, we have the word in our lives. So when we are constantly living in this way, the way Job had a fence, do you think we will have a fence? Of course, we too will have a fence. That's why God is calling us to a life like that. So having a godly lifestyle will automatically protect us from the attack of Satan. Now, Exodus chapter 12 and verse 13. Exodus 12, verse 13. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Yes. So this is about the Passover. And how did God protect the uh, Israelites from the plague of the firstborn? Through the blood. So when they put the blood on their doorposts, the angel of death passed over. That is why it's called Passover, right? Passed over. Today, what is protecting us? The blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus is on our lives. So we can proclaim this. We can acknowledge this. Already, by being born again, the blood has protected us. But we continue to acknowledge that the blood of Jesus is my protection. So the evil one cannot touch me. That also protects us. Okay. Now what else protects us? We find in Psalm 34 verse 7, the scripture tells us, the angel of the Lord, um, you know, protects encamps around those who fear him. So when we are walking with the Lord, angels also can protect us. Okay. Now how to, how to make angels work for us? Or how do we engage angels? We'll come to it later, but just a simple question I'm asking. Ah, we can ask God for the angels. Okay. That's, that's right. Then any any other way? Sister, by praying Psalm 91. Um for protection. Praying Psalm 91. 
that's fine that yeah it's a declaration so we can pray that i'm asking more specifically about angels we want angels to come and protect us how it's not something we can do uh, not from our authority but or uh, yeah. the lord so then we ask and pray right we pray that we have discussed already uh, all right let me just quickly give one uh, scripture so psalm 103 and verse 20 it says the angels heed the voice of his word angels heed the voice of his word so this means that whenever we declare the word of god angels will work for us so you have to speak now what sister gertrude said is correct when we speak psalm 91 about protection the angels will hear the word of god and they will be active in protecting us so speaking the word again declaration of the word is the way to have angels working all right so declaring the word that's the answer ah uh, yes yes please go ahead so uh, um i know we can't command them but we can pray and ask god i guess to command him to do something i just want to make sure i'm clear in terms of angels but speaking i'm kind of unclear about can you elaborate more in terms of we speak in the word and i kind of understand in some night one but other than some night one yeah you mean the example about us speaking a word and having angels work on our behalf cuz we can't command them we can yeah. pray and ask god to but i'm just kind of yeah can you give me example please sure so um shani what we are saying is that the angels heed the word of the lord or angels heed the voice of his word okay, that's what the scripture says angels heed the voice of his word so when i say something like verse 3 some 91 verse 3 surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence what we are doing is we are speaking what god has already spoken so it is it is like a command for the angels they are not our words they are god's words so we are just repeating the words that god has spoken and it again remains as a command for the angels uh did you okay. get yeah, that yeah 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 i understand it better thank you thank you i definitely understand it better. so that's how we just speak what god has spoken it is the psalm 9111 okay it says for he shall give his angel charge over you to keep you in all your ways yes yeah we can we can declare that also sure sister thank you for uh, sharing that okay so we have understood that the blood of jesus protects us our life of devotion protects us then uh, angels can protect us psalm 91 teaches us that when we are in the presence of the almighty god that also protects us so then we have a defense against the works of the evil one now our defense as as long as we are talking about defense there are a few more words that are used in scripture that we must consider so what are these words okay one is resist resist the devil and he will flee from you resist resist means we will um not allow satan any further to do what he wants to do that's what resist means there are other phrases or words that are very similar such as give no place or stand against withstand so all this tells us that sometimes when we are defending ourselves there is a little bit of a struggle by satan you know the one of the attitudes of satan and demon spirits are like we will understand this they're very stubborn 
they don't give up easily. So, if they were to give up easily, then we don't have to resist and you know withstand and uh, all that because we've immediately used our weapon and we are free. But demon spirits are not like that. We'll recognize that they'll keep trying. They'll they understand the weaknesses and they'll keep trying. They'll keep coming back. So, which is why we are being told in scripture, you have to stand for some time. You have to resist. Okay. So, when they are trying, we are also resisting. And we are saying, no way. You can do what you want to do, but I'm not going to allow you to come back into my life again. Right? So, that is where the resistance comes in. That is where the withstanding comes in. So, a believer must be aware of these things. Otherwise, what will happen? Believers get discouraged. Oh, I finished a Believer's Authority course and still it's not working. You know, all these weapons, whatever we discussed. Don't worry. Satan won't let go so easily. He'll keep trying. So, if he is going to be so stubborn, we have to be double stubborn. And we say, no way. We are going to withstand you. So, we must withstand. The, in our struggle against the enemy, the Bible also uses a, a phrase such as wrestle against. We, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against demonic powers. You know, wrestling, does it take some time to wrestle and win? It does because the, the enemy wrestler will not just let you go like that. So, because Satan tries so much, we also have to put up a fight and we have to wrestle. Sometimes we may feel like that, you know, against the sickness or when I'm praying for my family member who's not saved or, you know, when, when we are um, believing God for a breakthrough in some situation, it, it feels like, why is it taking so much time? It's like a struggle, wrestling. You're back and forth, back and forth with the devil. Sometimes you feel you're on top and then sometimes you feel he's on top and then you're just wrestling. But don't worry. Keep wrestling. Wrestle against. Okay? Or contend. And the Bible also tells us that the life of a believer, it's like a fight. You know what Paul said when he finished his uh, living his life, end of his life? I have fought the good fight. Of faith. So it's not easy, it's not smooth, right? Like you just sit, you, you know these slides where children sit, you sit and then you just slide. Life is not like that. Paul says, believers life, fight a good fight of faith. So there are going to be times when, you know, we have to resist the devil, wrestle with the devil, overcome the devil. So a lot of strength and determination is required from our side. And also, quench all the fiery darts. Quench all the fiery darts is when the weapons come, they should be nullified. Okay? So what helps the weapons to be nullified? What can you use to quench the fiery darts? Okay, fiery darts of accusation, condemnation, uh, fiery darts of deception. What will you use? Word of God, okay. Anything else we can use? They're all coming. They're all coming to hit us, right? Every day, Satan is shooting, sitting and shooting at us. What shall we use to quench? I have to nullify all those. Yeah. Faith. Okay, faith. Yes, faith. So, Word of God and faith. Use the shield of faith. So when we do this, we will overcome the attack of the evil one. So this is the way of resisting. Um, all right. we, we would need to look at the offensive. And uh, we will start off with the offensive in the next class. Is that okay, everyone? We'll just uh, stop here for now. Uh, if there are any doubts and questions, please let me know. We can talk about it and uh, close the class.
All right. Um, so let's pray and close then. Uh, I want to request somebody from the online batch to please pray. Shall I go ahead, sister? Yes, yes, Sister Lucy, please pray. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for revealing us your revealing us the in, uh, depths of your truth of your word using the power of your name, the blood of your Lord Jesus Christ, O Master Lord. Thank you, O Father God. Guide us to implement in our lives to excel over the kingdom of darkness and to be your children of your kingdom of light, O Master Lord. Thank you for the word you have given us to our lives, O Master Lord, with the, with the assurance that we are not left alone we are under your shield under your guidance by your word oh master lord jesus thank you in jesus mighty name i pray amen 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 thank you sister lucy and thank you everyone for connecting to today's class we will meet again next week thank you bye for now